two. Welcome back to WNST, Towson, Baltimore. And Baltimore Positive, my big thanks and appreciation, my friends at Liberty Pure Solutions, for making the water run at WNST. We are very appreciative of them and all of our sponsors. We're going to get the Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery back out on the road. Uh, and we're going to be at Nacho Mama's at some point, probably early March. I'm working on some dates into the spring. We're going to be doing a lot of things around here and eating crab cakes. This guy's no stranger to a crab cake. I mean, he might be running around in Connecticut or some godforsaken place, but he has fond memories of his days here covering the one-time Baltimore Colts. And uh, where was your favorite crab cake here, uh, Clark Judge? Where, where did you eat your crab cakes in Baltimore 40 years ago? Uh, I went down to Brooklyn Park. Um okay. And uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. I should know the name of it. But I used is that to go the 4100 Club? Gunnings? Where'd you go? Gunnings, Gunnings. Gunnings ah. is the place. That's the place. I used to go to Gunnings, and I love Gunnings. And so when we go to games at the Ravens, I'd say, let's go down uh, Brooklyn Park, and um, we're going to go to Gunnings. Loved it. It's my favorite place. Favorite place. Everyone has one, and this is the beauty of the Crab Cake Tour. I had John Arand on earlier. I know you know him from Sports Business Journal. And he's sure. a D.C. guy. He's talking about Crab Cakes, my tour and all that. And, like, where do you go? Everybody's got a Crab Cake place. So I'm glad I asked you yours. Man, I, I don't know what to say. Are you going to the Super Bowl? Let's start with that. Am I, I'm not going to the Super Bowl. No, I, I was because the, my first Super Bowl was in L.A. I said, this won't be my last one. I'm going to go. But with the Omicron, we, I just decided not to. I, I, what was your first one? Was your first one the uh, Rams uh, uh, Steelers or no? No, the first one was the um, Washington and the Miami Dolphins. Um, so it was the 1982 season, the strike, strike season. season. Right. And right. Um, so then got to know Bobby Beathard and the Redskins pretty well. And, and so started for, sort of following that team and went to and then went to whatever, what, 36, 37 Super Bowls, whatever. And so to, this was going to be my last one. I had some thing set up in san diego where i used to work and we were going to drive up that day and and uh, go to the game but um my contact there is nervous i said i don't know that i want to fly out there and, and when i had a chance to make reservations the, the virus was sort of in full fledged so i said no i'm not going to do it so I, I made plans i wasn't going to go i believed most of november and december like if the ravens didn't go and like why do i want to wear a mask 12 hours a day yeah now that we're up on it a little bit and I'm feeling it, and it's L.A., and the Rams might be in it, right? So they might. I, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to. I want to see the new stadium. I have friends. To your point, my cousin lives in San Diego. She's now in Carlsbad. Like mm -hmm. you and I have the San Diego thing that you know yeah. that we love. So I haven't been out there in a couple of years, and I, I'm going to wear a mask. I'm going to go out. I'm going to. And if it's a little lighter version, I mean, the way I've competed here, it's my 28th Super Bowl, by the way. I missed last yeah. year. I did 27 in a row. Missed last year. I'm, I'm back on the circuit this year. But the, the games this weekend were just for a guy like you that dedicated your life and your wife involved in it and me for 30 years and 27 years of the Ravens here uh, to, to see something you've never seen to have a weekend like that. It, it is a little bit like the mafia pulls you back in. I mean, the, the NFL this weekend was as good as it's ever been, right? Like literally any era, any weekend, any game, I was at the drive game with Elway. I mean, I've been at legendary football games. This weekend was a, a different kind of level for the league. Yeah, it didn't matter where you were. They were all great games, all walk-off wins, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and re ends with that Kansas City-Buffalo <laughs> game, which still has me shaking my head. But I will tell you this. I mean, I, I loved it. It's the, it's the best wild, wild card. It's the best divisional round weekend I've ever seen. It's the best probably weekend of football I've seen because they were riveting games. You had the presumptive MVP excused. You have the greatest quarterback in the modern era excused. And, and you know, what, what is going on here? And then you have that wild game and Sunday night where they're 25 points in the last two minutes. Uh, people are saying to me, you know, it's greatest game ever. Uh, greatest. And I went, it's not the greatest game ever. I saw it. It was exciting. It was one of the most exciting, but football is supposed to be offense and defense, right? I didn't see a whole lot of defense in that game. And, and my favorite games typically, and I'm old school, are Raven Steelers. I love those games because those are Titanic clashes and, and they're close. They're competitive. And there's a lot of defense there. There was no defense there at the end of that game. None. It was seven on seven drills. So you have 13 seconds to play and you can go 50 yards and kick the field goal. It's not football to me. You know, I, I helped John Stebman get some background information. I remember talking to Sam Huff and talking oh, sure. to some guys about the 58 game and, um, and the greatest game ever played. And it's been known as that since whenever it was dubbed that back in the day. Yeah. Right. What's the greatest game you ever saw? And I, I dude, I, 
I've been to so many football games. I mean, I've been to 27 Super Bowls. So take Philly special, take any of the comebacks, any of the stuff that were great Super Bowls. And you were in a lot of really friggin' lousy Super Bowls in the late 80s, yeah. right? There was a whole decade of bad football, bad Super Bowls. But does it have to be a Super Bowl? Does it have to be Jac- the Jacoby Jones thing to me, the Mile High Mirror? I've. To me, that's up there with any division, and that was a division weekend, right? But I was at that game, sitting there for five hours. It was cold as hell. I, I, great game. I mean, I, I was at the drive. I'm thinking of great games. Yeah. And my most memorable game was probably the time that the Ravens played the, the Vikings in the snow game here, where we sat in the snow, and there were five scores in the last three minutes or whatever. Yeah. Hard to, And that's just a regular season week 12 game or whatever it was. Man, football, we, we've been to so many. It's like people say, what's the greatest concert you've been to? I'm like – Dude, I haven't been to a hundred concerts. I've been to thousands of concerts. Yeah, right, so I, I right, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. And I'm not that, what is the greatest meal you've ever, I don't, but what is the greatest, when somebody says to you, what's the greatest game you've ever seen? What do you say? Well, the first, since you mentioned concerts, the greatest concert I ever saw was 1969, seeing the Who in a nightclub in Boston when they did Tommy. That was the greatest concert <laughs> I've ever seen because I'd never seen anything like that. And that was tremendous. That was that changed my whole life. That was tremendous. So I just started following the Who, and and that was that was great. Anyway, um, it's funny when you said that. I was thinking back and went, God, greatest games, and and three come to mind. That Baltimore Denver game was one because remember how cold it was, like six degrees that day. Were you what at the I game? Did, yeah. Oh, sure. So what I did, I walked down with what three minutes to go, two minutes to go. I go into the Denver press room because they're going to bring the winning team out. So I'm in there and the Denver media is setting up. So I'm in there with the Denver media setting up and they've got the cameras and there's the rostrum and everything's there. And and people are down there getting ready for Peyton Manning to come in. Everybody left the press box, by the way, everybody, every, everybody, the only ones left in the press box were me and Ozzy and Eric and my wife. And it was (laughs) cold. The press box was was 45 degrees. It was. I, I had heaters in, I was wearing gloves in the press box. I had heaters in my shoes in the press box that <laughs> yeah. was heated. That's how cold it was. It was outrageously yeah, it, cold. It was it was frigid. So I'm I'm waiting there and and I swear to God I'm just going let's just let's get this over. And said, all of a sudden Flacco drops back and throws the pass and I'll never forget watching going where is it? Oh my God he's got the ball. How can you let this guy get behind you? And it, what was it, 70 yards? I don't know what the, the, the length of the, the touchdown was. I'd never, I just couldn't believe that they, they blew it like that. And all of a sudden these guys go and look at each other. And I thought, you know what? I'm in the wrong place. What am I doing down here? I'm in the wrong place. Ozzy and Eric were stood up and they had packed their bags and they were literally standing behind me. My wife was next to me on the left and as the ball went up, I'm on the 35 yard. The ball went up. My eyes went up. I'm watching the ball. And I saw him pulling away. And I, and I stood up and I grabbed my wife's hand and we stood and we, 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 and it, 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 it was the most remarkable thing. I mean, watching yeah. Lee Evans drop the ball in that corner press box in Foxborough, yeah, I was there watching for that. the ball sail from Cundiff. I mean, I've had yeah. moments. Yeah. Yeah. And I this weekend was strange for me, Clark, because I moved on Thursday and Friday. I'm living in boxes in our new place, and we didn't connect the cable. And I literally spent Saturday at the casino at Maryland Live going down to see what gambling looked like there. And my wife had a little business down at the mall there. We, we came back without cable, and I'm like, we'll stream the game. Dude, streaming's a mistake. Like, we missed the end of the Rams game because the stream got toggled or whatever. So I have these memories of these four games that are different because I had this awful experience. But I went to divisional games for years and years and years um, in the 90s and in the aughts. I I went to Tennessee and Pittsburgh on cold days and different stuff because I love the league so much. Um, The television presentation of it at this point, to sit in my warm home now and go game to game and not be in Green Bay and watching people freeze that I did all of that. Um, The presentation of it and the way the league has really leveraged the plague over the last two years to become the one and only thing like this and they got to get the calls right i think they, they got to fix the affair they got a lot of things they need to fix but yeah. boy they don't need to fix the drama of the national football league it's as good as it's ever been yeah no that's right and 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 i, I want to continue on that just because i mentioned that one game but that's not that's not necessarily in fact it's not the greatest game i saw um i would mention uh, a couple others. One was the 1998 divisional round playoff game with San Francisco and Green Bay covered the 49ers. I'm on the field when Steve Young leads the drive down. 
with uh, Terrell Owens making the catch with, I think, three seconds left in the end zone. That was unreal because you're going, they're going to lose the Packers again. There was a play there where Jerry Rice actually fumbled. They had replay today. It would be called a fumble. It's called an incomplete pass. And then Young goes back, slips a little bit, then pops up, throws the pass to Owens, who had dropped about three or four that day, and he catches the end zone. That was exhilarating. Oh, my God, we're going crazy. But the two best were the 1994 NFC Championship game. I'm covering the 49ers, the beat guy, Mercury News. They play the Dallas Cowboys, who they lost to the previous two years. That was a colossal battle. That was two great teams going head to head. It was the Super Bowl, really. And we had was- three feet of snow here that day, and I walked to Dave Muir's house. He's a Cowboys fan. And literally, I remember that game vividly. We weren't in the league yet. We we, yeah, we, that's were, right. that's we right. had just lost expansion. We were never getting a team in Baltimore in 1994. Yep, and there were three turnovers by Dallas in the first five minutes, including that interception by Eric Davis return on the third play of the game. I enjoyed suddenly, every moment of that watching Dave Muir slink in his couch as a Cowboy fan. And I knew great. how much it meant to George Seifert and that team, Steve Young especially, and it was just exhilarating to be in Candlestick. And having been with that team, really embedded with them all year, you just felt the whole energy of the city lifting that team. It was just a great moment. But I'd say probably the greatest game Nestor, if, if not that one, was the, the, the Brady 28-3 comeback against Atlanta. I, I didn't see that. I, I never was prepared for it. And then when I'm watching it happen, I'm going, I, I don't know that this is real. I mean, what's going on here? And, and at the end of that game, I just turned to, next to me was Dan Pompey from Chicago. And I said, I've never seen anything like that. This is unbelievable. This is a unique event. I don't know we'll ever see a game like this again. 28 to three and it's late. And in you third thought quarter. to yourself, he's 40 years old. I mean, this yeah. is the end, right? Like literally. Right. But, but that's, that's <laughs> when I just said, you know what, this guy's on a completely different level. I mean, he's a completely different level. Yeah. Atlanta gave them, you know, openings and, and made mistakes and everything, but he took advantage of it. And there's something about this guy being around him when he was at San Mateo, certainly saw him came to the 49ers for a workout as a young kid, but, but um, being up here in new England, seeing him all the time, something about him, that is so charismatic um, that I love watching him play. And I love watching him play this weekend. And I got the respect for him this weekend that I had for Troy Aikman in that 1994 NFC Championship game. That was the greatest game I ever saw Aikman play. He lost. He lost. But he got beaten to a pulp in that game. Picked himself up. Kept throwing. Knocked down. Picked himself up. And I thought, that's the toughest son of a gun I've ever seen. Brady last weekend got treated like a pinata. And, and that's not like him. He got treated like a pinata, and yet he picks himself up and somehow gets him back in the game. Yeah, I know what happened. The Rams fumbled four times. Okay, that, but it seems to happen with Brady. Something happens, and he brought them back. And I just thought, that's we're watching something that I'll, I'll never see again in my life. I know that. I'll never see that again in my life. And, and I, that's what I loved about this weekend. But um, as I said, like if you want to put that NFC championship game against that, that Buffalo, Kansas City, Buffalo, Kansas City certainly had – more great boom 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 the prototech the pyrotechnics were everywhere but where was the defense the defense was there in that nfc championship game and you saw it two colossal forces going head to head that was a great great game a lot of hall of famers in that game this oh, guy's lot of, of fame he, he oh. votes on the hall of fame clark judge is our guest i don't know that i i you know, talked about cbs and all the places you've been and all the super bowls and all that stuff what yeah. are you doing these days give me a little uh because i the, the hall of fame still the, the votes this week right literally coming up folk was last week last week it but was, the word will come out next week right word, word will come out february 10th but I bet it comes out before then, a leak before then. But we voted last week. And, yeah, the class of uh, 2022 is, uh, will be announced on February 10th at the NFL Honor Show. But uh, I'm working with Talk of Fame Network still with Ron Borges and Rick Oz and both Hall of Fame voters. But I've got my own Goose podcast. got a shout-out over the weekend. Give Goose some love. He, he, did. Get he, did. Love. he did get a shout-out from Jimmy Johnson. Um, and then um, we've got uh, – I, I do a, a podcast with Ira Kaufman – the eye test for two and we line up hall of famers and and uh people who want to talk about either the hall of fame or something that's relevant and we got bill polian coming on this week who's also a, a hall of fame board of selectors member but a longtime friend uh and associate of mine and um i want to ask him about what buffalo is going through because he certainly went through that with the uh, four missed super bowls and wide right and what people must be feeling there and then also what he thinks about the overtime rule and he and i are in sync on a lot of stuff and I talked to him briefly yesterday about that. But um, and then also what he thought of the vote last week. So, yeah, thanks for asking. The Talk of Fame Network, which is through uh, sportsillustrated.com and then the I Test for Two podcast. 
Clark Judge, one of my favorites, covered the uh, Colts back in the day in the yeah. uh, in the seventies yeah, and eighties. Uh, and a, uh, a, a, a not a colleague, but everybody talked about Clark Judge back in the day uh, in Baltimore. My, my Mike Marlowe's and uh, all the guys oh, that, that yeah. were my were yeah, my yeah. mentors back in the day. Yeah. I wanted to grow up and be Clark Judge and cover the Colts. As no, they you were didn't. Gone. No, you didn't. You want to grow up and be a Vito Stellino is what you wanted to be. Or Ken Murray. Yeah, yeah, or absolutely. Ken Murray. Yeah, or Bernie Miklas or something like that. Yeah, Bernie. But, Bernie doing real well in St. Louis. No football in St. Louis. By the way, when I see Stan Kroenke, all I see is scumbags. I, I so agree. going out I, to L.A. and seeing all this and watching, you know, Al Michaels shine his pole over the weekend. It's I was in St. Louis seeing the Stones when they opened the tour back in September. Oh, wow. I was there watching. Fo- the day Tucker hit the field goal, I wasn't in Detroit. I elected to go see Mick in St. Louis instead of the Ravens in Detroit. So I missed the great, the longest yeah. field goal in history. I wasn't at it, yeah. but I watched it in St. Louis. In a baseball bar where they used to have football, that, that, that's it's dirty. The league's it's so dirty. dirty. You were it, here it, when the Colts left. It's always been dirty. It it has been, and and you know I I don't get me started on on that because I I talk about the league's so in tune to player safety, player safety. That's all we're about, player safety. If that's the way you you feel, why are we playing Thursday night games? Why are we extending the regular season to seventeen games? And soon it's going to be eighteen. Not about player safety, about making money. Understand? Just be upfront about it. We're about making money. And, and, you know, I, I just see that, that a lot of the changes going on and I, um, it's not, it's not the same. And that doesn't mean it's, it's, it's worse. It's just not the same. And, um, you know, I grew up in an era where you had uh, relationships with coaches, players, and you spent a lot of time together. When I said it was embedded in the 49ers, that's exactly what it was because I go out on Tuesdays when no one was, I, the players were off and the coaches were in there coming up with their game plans. And I remember one time I was there at nine at night, Mike Shanahan comes down and goes, what are you doing in here? And I said, I'm working. He goes, you know what? I respect that. And from then on, he'd come down on Tuesdays and say, here's what we're looking at. This is what we're doing. And I found this was it was just great to get that kind of relationship. They trusted you. You trusted them. My favorite people in the world are coaches. I had Brian on this morning for breakfast. He's going out and joining Marvin, Donnie Henderson, Herm Edwards in Arizona because he wants to be around good people. And they're all good good, people. Those are good people. Those are people you want to be in a room with, whether you're talking football, wine, steak, travel, life, And good football people. But that's how the, the eras change because you would know, Nestor. If Earl Weaver were to apply for a, a manager opening today, they wouldn't hire him. They wouldn't hire him. They go, hey, no, he's, 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 he's the blue language. No, he, I don't like the cigarettes. No, no. You have to be sort of a photogenic, right? Or you have to be the right guy in front of microphones. He was a great manager and he's a great guy to be around. People around him love being around him. He was a baseball guy. But now it's it's more of the, we, we're appealing to this sort of, sort of broader audience. You got to get the young guy, nice hair, and then he has to have the right syntax and everything. Um, I, I just I love that though that era and and yeah I'm old but I, I love that era and I was glad and really privileged to cover football then. Look, dude, I could sit here for hours with you and we have and I'm really sorry you're not coming to L.A. because I'm literally one of the reasons I, I'm going to do great work. I'm going to kick. 1057's ass as I've done for 30 years and I'll proudly say it because they're not going to be there but <laughs> the, the, the the part for me is getting up early and shotgunning guests and all I don't, I, part of me going to LA at this point because it might be one of the last times I go based on the way the yeah. league treats me and the yeah. way the Ravens treat me quite frankly is that I want to see people like you. So you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I want to. I want to go eat some sushi in downtown LA with guys like you and spend too much. You know what I mean. Well, I that's it. That and, and Nestor, I know you're going to hustle, but that's part of the reason I'm not going is because a lot of my colleagues, my peers, they're not going either. You know, so those guys either they're not working anymore or they've got kind of a partial interest and just say, no, I'm not really interested. You're going to make me hang out with young people. Is that what you're going to do, Clark? <laughs> yeah. But I'm hang- so I'm hanging out with people that I either don't know or I don't have a lot in common with. And then you suddenly say, why am I here? To see a game? I'm not here to see a game. I was here there in the years past to do Hall of Fame voting. But we do that now virtually. So there really is no reason to go unless you've got some kind of vested interest. And I don't really have a vested interest unless, unless the 49ers were to get it, which I think they could. Dude, I've been on the line with you for 20 minutes, and I just looked over your shoulder, and I see Elway in a seven on the that's snow. The, <laughs> do you see the picture below him? Do no, I can't the, see it. I can't see it. See, I hang on one second. I'm going to show uh, this to you. The uh, picture right, below right. him? Hang on. Elway in the snow was at that game. Okay, let's see. Can you get that picture? Wait, wait a second. Right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. No, I, I, hold right, on. Right. What, what are we doing here? Right there. Wait, wait a second. Right Johnny you look at Johnny you Johnny you at Westminster College and I I wrote him in the early 60s and um and he wrote me back and he signed that and the and I so I've kept that and, and I've got a football here signed by him also up here by the way Nestor right there a classic photo oh Johnny throwing against and the Giants here, 
Oh, look at that. So, yeah. So to say is that Raymond Barry, what is that? It's Raymond Barry, yeah, it's Raymond right. Barry who, who I talked to when he was in uh, Canton. And, and I did say to him, I wrote to him when I was six or something. And, and then he wrote me back a long thing that I've got. And he wrote me a long letter. And I told him, I said, I've kept that letter. And it really, it, it changed my life in terms of what I was doing as a football fan, because I, be, I became such a diehard Colts fan. And I said, you made it so much more interesting for me to watch football. And he said, you know what? It's people like you fans that, that I love to hear from, because that's why we played for the fans. And he's, he was great. He couldn't have been more of a gentleman. But that, that picture of Elway, that, I was at that game. And, and that, I flew in that morning. They had like 15 inches of snow. It was the last game of the 1987 season against the Chargers. And I got to the game like late in the first quarter because we couldn't get a cab. We got one cab and that, that was it. Well, I, 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 only, I moved and my office is still in. So this is, this is the only piece that I keep in my office. And you will appreciate this and the history of this. You have no idea what it is. It's not even football related. Uh, it's actually uh, baseball related. So I'm, I'm unwrapping it. I'll put it on my wall. Oh, there you go. I'm making a mess in here. Hold on, Clark. This was a gift from the estate of the great Mike Flanagan. This is the uh, this is my Cuba Orioles uh, poster that's on the wall oh, from whoa. 1999. Uh, so I'm going to put this back on the wall. I, I, I have it on the wall because it's it was Mike whoa. Flanagan's. That's a and, beauty. Uh, and yeah, and you know who else has it on the wall? Tim Wendell came on the show and had this on, on his wall uh, because we were on the same flight together from Miami with Joe Morgan. Uh, oh, so wow. that's a little baseball oh piece there for you. Well, it's about a 12 minute flight from Miami to Havana back in 99. Uh, a delicious ice cream on that United flight. As I remember Clark judges here, he's talk of fame. You can follow him out on Twitter, follow him everywhere, follow him uh, as we decide who's in the hall of fame two weeks from now. And uh, I'll get you back on. We'll, we'll yeah, talk about a long time. Or something, all right. Yeah, that sounds My good. love to Leslie. Go uh, shovel some snow up there. Keep those beautiful That's, snow. We just got coming. some last night. We're shoveling this morning, Nestor. All right. Well, I moved to the country myself uh, over the weekend. So, uh, you good know, you. I, I like your pictures and um, I like our friendship. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Thanks, Lester. Good. A lot of pleasure. This is really good to talk to you. Clark Judge, uh, uh, pimping John Elway somewhere <laughs> in Baltimore all these years later. Very difficult to do. I am Nestor. Big appreciation to Liberty Pure Solutions and all of our sponsors. The Maryland Lottery uh, presents the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. We're going to get that back out on the road very, very soon. And I'm headed to Super Bowl 53 soon. I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking Baltimore.